For years now, we've been hearing rumors about Google launching a Pixel Watch to compete directly with the Apple Watch. We've seen renders and prices, but year after year, we're left disappointed. Google hasn't launched it yet. But this year, however, we're more certain than ever that Google will actually be launching the elusive Pixel Watch. And there's three reasons why I'm gonna talk about in this video. We'll also talk about what the watch is probably going to look like and what features we can expect, as well as some of the shortcomings you might wanna be aware of. We've seen a lot of leaks and a lot of renders that I'll show you throughout this video to really get you a better idea of what the Pixel Watch is actually going to look like because honestly, out of all of the watch videos I've ever made, and I've made a lot of smartwatch videos, one of the most common comments I get is, should I buy this or should I wait for the Pixel Watch? It seems to be like a, kind of like a Bigfoot in the, in the smartwatch world. But let's start off with the three reasons that we're more confident now than we were before that Google's actually going to launch a Pixel Watch for real this year. So the first reason is Wear OS 3, but hear me out on this. Google is doing a couple things. First of all, they're focusing a lot more on their smartwatches. For a while, Wear OS kind of went a little bit forgotten, didn't get the, the attention it needed, until last year, Google started revamping this. They improved their own apps, they've been encouraging more third-party development, they integrated with Fitbit and Samsung, and they're kind of really focusing a lot more trying to compete with the Apple Watch and make more of a unified platform for Android users. So that's one of the big reasons there. Wear OS 3 obviously shows that Google has some interest there, but on top of that, how does it actually mean that they're going to be launching a watch? Well, Google hasn't actually rolled out Wear OS 3 yet. Samsung sort of has a version of it. Most other watches out there that would be running Wear OS 3 haven't gotten the update yet. And think about it, if you were Google and you had a brand new watch on the way and you had a new inter interface, you'd probably want the two to be launching together. You'd probably want to be the first one to roll out with the new Wear OS. So that's just a thought. If we're going to see Wear OS 3 coming very soon, it's not unlikely that that would be a great time for Google to launch the Pixel Watch to really demonstrate what Wear OS 3 is meant to be. That's kind of why Google launches the Pixel series in general for their phones to show what Android is really all about. Now, the second reason we're pretty confident the Pixel Watch is right around the corner is because Google also acquired Fitbit. Now they did this about a year and a half ago, but, but still, if you look at Fitbit, they've been launching a new Versa watch every year. The Versa 2, the Versa 3, but no Versa 4 last year. And you could say maybe this is because they were focusing their efforts on making a Pixel watch. Alternatively, maybe they were just holding out until Wear OS 3 came, so they didn't release something that had antiquated software on there, but I don't know. It was just something to think of. Now, of course, one of the reasons that Google bought Fitbit in the first place was probably because they wanted to focus more on wearables and make something that is more user-friendly for Android devices, make something that's more comprehensive that can really compete with the Apple Watch. So that's really the second reason there. Now, before we get into what this watch is going to look like and what it can do, the third reason that we're really pretty confident Google's coming out this really within the next couple of months is because we're seeing more consistent and more accurate leaks now than we were before. And by that, I don't just mean renders of what it might look like, but also some actual leaked images from the marketing material that Google is likely to use. So these came from John Prosser a pretty long time ago, maybe eight months ago, nine months ago, he came out with the renders. And about two or three months ago, he came out with some actual photos from Google and they look pretty convincing. But let's actually get into the design. So the design of this watch, well, you might wonder, is it gonna be square like an Apple watch? Is it gonna be round like every other watch? The good news is it's probably going to be a round watch. The reason we say that is because it's running Wear OS. It only makes sense to be running Wear OS 3 and just about every Wear OS watch out there or all of the most popular ones from TicWatch and Fossil and uh, Scoggin and a lot of other ones as well are all running Wear OS using a round display. So the good news is we're probably going to be seeing a round display that also matches the renders and the leaks. Now as a side note, if you wanna know more about the Pixel Watch when it actually comes out from Google, be sure to go down and click that subscribe button. I'll be making many videos about it as soon as I get my hands on this watch. As you can see in the renders and the leaks, it looks like we're going to have a really slim body as well as a very, very large display. And it looks kind of like we're gonna have a fairly slim bezel around the outside, which is fairly uncommon for a lot of Wear OS watches like the TicWatch E3, as you can see here, has a pretty chunky bezel all the way around, but it's not unlike some of the Huawei watches out there. There are some watches that have a very slim bezel. They're just a little bit more rare, which is one of the reasons people have been so excited for the Pixel Watch. It's also not unlikely this would come in two different sizes. It, we could maybe expect about a 40 millimeter and a 44 millimeter, maybe 42 and 46, depending on what the battery looks like. But that ties me into uh, what I would 
would maybe be a little bit worried about with this. So Wear OS watches are not known for amazing battery life. It has been improving over time with better chips and, and, and better batteries, but they're usually getting about a day to a day and a half battery life, similar to what we're seeing on the Apple Watch. So I would say with this, unfortunately, I'm expecting to see approximately a one day battery, especially with such a large display, such a thin body, and it's running Wear OS, which means the combination of that doesn't really stack up for anything near a two or three or seven day battery life. I think we're gonna be a little bit disappointed on the battery life here. On the right side of this, you can see most of the renders and really obviously the operating system in general, looks like it would be wanting a, a rotating crown there. So this is probably going to be a button. It's probably going to be a rotating crown to help you navigate the interface. If you press and hold this, you're almost definitely going to be able to open Google Assistant. But the question comes with what kind of health sensors are we actually going to have? Now, Google did acquire Fitbit, which means they're going to have access to a lot of Fitbit's health tracking analytics and data and sensors and their technology that they've been spending a lot of time working on. But if they're actually going to put an ECG on here, that's one of the big questions because that would make it very competitive with the likes of the Apple Watch as well as the Galaxy Watches. And so I think that is somewhat likely, but for a first generation, I wouldn't hold it against Google if they didn't add an ECG on here. However, on the inside of the watch, I would definitely expect to see at least four diodes for the, the heart rate sensor, as well as blood oxygen tracking, so you can track sleep and movement and all, type, all types of different things. I think you're going to have GPS on here, and it really should be a full-blown smartwatch, similar to what we're seeing from maybe the Fossil Gen 6, for example. I think that's probably going to be our best indicator of what this watch is actually going to look like. What you're seeing in the leaks and the renders that is unlike the Fossil Gen 6 however, is that there appears to only be one button, which is the rotating crown. There's a chance that we might have a smaller button above that, as you might have seen in some of the older renders, but in general, it's very likely we're only going to have one button on this device, which means that you're probably going to be using either the touchscreen or Google's voice assistant for most of what you're doing. And being that this is made by Google, and Google's big thing recently has been their voice assistant, we can expect to see a bit of an overhaul and a much deeper integration of the voice assistant with this device. So with Without a doubt, I can say that I'm, I'm very confident this is going to have a microphone and a speaker on there. Google's voice assistant is so important to them, I couldn't imagine this not having that. But as far as what's actually powering this device, there are a couple options. First of all, and this is very likely, it could be running an Exynos chip, which is what Samsung's Watch 4 was using, as well as the Watch 4 Classic, which makes sense because that was already running Wear OS 3. So if Google's going to be using the same chip, maybe they would give it to Samsung, have them do their testing, and make sure that the operating system runs very smoothly on this chip before launching their first device. But if we look at Google's latest phones, they're actually also running on an Exynos chip. In fact, Google took an Exynos chip from Samsung and added a few of their own elements in there for voice assistant and, and image processing and things like that, and they made it their own Tensor chip. So I would say it's not unlikely that on this, on this device, we might actually see something branded as a Tensor chip, despite being probably run on Exynos in the background. Of course, the other possibilities would be maybe a Snapdragon 4100, which is running essentially all other Wear OS watches right now from TicWatch and Fossil and, and most of the other ones out there, or possibly even the new Snapdragon 5100 chip, which is still kind of rumored and it's very unlikely that it would be that chip. However, if it was, that would be very exciting, possibly a massive battery life improvement there. But there's probably also going to be a lot of Fitbit integration. You can expect some great health tracking on here, specifically tied in with maybe the Fitbit app or otherwise, a lot of Fitbit style widgets on here that people have already known and liked for a really long time. But as far as when this device is actually going to launch, of course, there's no saying exactly when it will launch. But rumors and, and leaks have really been saying that it's likely to launch in early May, meaning just in about two months from now. And this kind of is congruent with a lot of previous launches from Google in the past. For example, the Google Pixel 3a launched in early May of 2019. And so it's not unlikely to see a similar timing for a launch of a Pixel Watch. This would also give them a solid three to four months of hype before Apple and Samsung launch their next generation watches. Personally, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially for a company like Google coming out with a new watch. But I don't want to cause too much excitement around the Pixel Watch. Leave a comment and let me know what you think of it. However, I wanna remind you that Google has a kind of 50-50 track record with hardware. Sometimes they launch things like the Pixel 3a that are an absolute hit and everybody loves them. Sometimes they launch the Pixel Buds, which are kind of a mixed review. Then they come back with the Pixel Buds A, which are a lot better. Sometimes they come out with Google Glass, right? You never know what you're going to get from Pixel hardware. It really is very hit or miss. Sometimes they do a fantastic job and sometimes they disappoint. And I'm gonna guess that with this watch, although I'm very excited to see what it looks like, 
I think the battery life is very likely to be one of the big misses here. That's my prediction, but leave your comments below and let me know what you think of the new and up and coming Pixel Watch. So if you enjoyed this video, as always consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.